Lauren, it's so good to have you here on Spark TV. Hello, thank you so much for having me. I am super excited about today's episode because it's a little bit different than normal. So usually we are interviewing uh, amazing women in business and today we're interviewing an amazing supporter of women in business. So, so excited to have you on the podcast. Uh, Lauren is from IP Australia. So why don't we kick things off with who you are, what your role is and what is IP Australia? <laughs> sure. Yes, so as you mentioned, my name's Lauren, so Lauren Stoko, and I am one of the directors at IP Australia. I work in the customer experience group, and uh, basically IP Australia is the uh, Australian government agency that's responsible for administering IP or intellectual property rights. Basically, <laughs> what our vision is, is to have a world-leading Australian IP system that helps build prosperity through innovation. We know that IP helps to encourage innovation. And one of the things that we're really passionate about is supporting small to medium businesses to be able to uh, have efficient access to products and services so that they can continue to innovate and do what they do best. I love that so much. And I love that that's, you know, why we've partnered with IP Australia as well, because you are such passionate supporters of, um, you know, not only women in business, but innovation and business in general. So um, yeah, super excited for this conversation. So we often get asked, what is intellectual property and why is it actually important? What are your thoughts on that? So IP refers to creations of the mind. Basically, it could include anything from a brand or a logo to an invention or a design or an artistic work or even uh, plant varieties, so new plant varieties. IP rights legally protect your idea and they give you the exclusive rights to profit from them. Mm. So IP provides a number of benefits. There's two types of IP. There's registered intellectual property and then there's unregistered intellectual property. Registered IP is why you would deal with, say, us, IP Australia, that's where you need to formally recognise and register an IP with the office. So that includes, you know, filing an application, paying a fee. Then there's unregistered IP and that's like copyright is mm. the most well-known one. Uh, and that's automatically protected once it's in material form. So you have that IP to basically be able to protect and encourage your innovation. And um, something from the women's perspective that might be of interest to you, when we did our uh, intellectual property report last year in 2023, we found that women's participation in startup management teams was linked to an increase in overall IP holdings. So basically, the more women that were involved in management teams, the more IP they had. That's uh, so, so cool. About I love that. Ten. Yeah, yeah, I was really excited when I read that in the IP report, I was like, yes. <laughs> so it sounds like there are different kinds of IP and different kinds of trademark protection for small businesses. Um, can you kind of talk us through how it all works and what types there are? Absolutely. There are seven types of IP. And my favorite way to describe those seven types is through a business selling coffee. Cool. So let's say you and I have a coffee shop. I'm excited yeah. already. <laughs> <laughs> the first type of IP right that we might have protects the new plant varieties. So that's the plant breeders, right? So let's say we have a new coffee plant. We get a new type of coffee bean. We want to protect that or, you know, the farmer might want to protect that. That's through a plant breeders, right? Cool. Then you go, okay, I take that coffee bean and then I use my coffee machine to be able to turn it into coffee. Let's say I have a new type of coffee machine, a new invention. A patent mm -hmm. protects how that invention works. From there, the coffee will go into a cup. And let's say we've got this awesome design for a cup. That will be protected by a design right. We then want to sell our coffee, so we need a brand. Our brand is protected by a registered trademark. So we could have, say, a logo that's on our coffee cup. Mm. Then if we have a brochure, selling you know showing advertising the different types of coffee that we sell the what is written there so the original expression of that idea is covered automatically covered by copyright so the four previous ones you need to register copyright you don't need to register it's automatically protected once it's in written in material form okay 
then we might have like a trade secret, let's say a different a secret blend of coffee beans that would be protected by uh, trade secrets are generally protected by like non-disclosure agreements. Mm. So rather than registered IP. And then finally there's circuit layouts. So as in like chips, computer oh, chips. Wow. So different layouts for those circuits are also automatically protected. So there are the seven different types of IP. Um, that you might want to or that you might want to have as part of your sort of business planning. A lot of businesses have multiple forms of IP that they think mm. about, um, that they sort of strategize and go, okay, these are the ones that we need to protect. This is, you know, one that we need to treat as an intangible asset. Yeah, well, it's really interesting. I, I think sometimes when we think of IP, you kind of just think of your logo, but it's really interesting that it's actually a lot more complex than that and there's all of these different things. Um, right. Yeah, that you can actually, I love the coffee shop story because it kind of helped me visualize each of the parts of your business and how, you know, IP relates to them. I think that's super cool. So, <laughs> so, so why would you actually register a trademark? So kind of, and I guess maybe I get confused with copyright and trademarks because you kind of go, it's mine. I made it and I put it on my things. Well, surely it can be mine. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, so copyright really applies when, you know, books, for instance, or your pamphlets or your movies and your scripts and songs, you know, the words of a song and things like that. When it's a written expression or a material expression, it's automatically uh -huh. sort of covered. Where trademarks come in is sort of more along the lines of business names and logos uh, that they're not automatically covered. Um, they need to be, you need to basically have a registered trademark so that registered trademark gives you the exclusive use of mm -hmm. that trademark across Australia. So it's country by country. Um, and in Australia, it's for an initial period of 10 years, and then you can renew it forever if you'd like. Um, but that gives you that legal avenue. I think the people internally, so one of the trademark examiners called it a sword and a shield to me once. <laughs> and I kind of, it stuck in my brain because it went, okay, it's a sword in that if someone else is using your trademark, you can use it as a legal avenue to say send a mm -hmm. cease and desist letter. But it's also that shield if someone else says, hey, you're using my trademark or I've got this idea too and you're using it and you can say, well, actually I registered it. It's my idea. I'm using it. Um, and then you can, it's, a, it's an asset and you can license it. You can sell it. That's so cool. Um, I know from personal experience, it's one of the questions. So when we started capital raising for one of our businesses, mm -hmm. investors would often ask, you know, what IP assets we had. So I love that you're referring to them as an asset, because I also think sometimes we feel as business owners, like this is so complex. Do we really need to worry about it? You know? Mm -hmm. And, but I think like, I love how you're saying it's an asset because it's like, okay, don't think about it as a chore or like a legal box you've got to tick. Actually think about it as building your foundations to your business and increasing the value of your business. I think that's really cool. Exactly. And when it comes to, for instance, trademarks, we all know like the value of a brand. It's, it's very mm. well understood, but that brand is what differentiates you from a customer. So it's about protecting that differentiation. I um I have a horror story actually. Um, a girlfriend of mine started a beauty brand and she did have to change her name, logo, colors because she hadn't actually registered it and somebody else had something very close. Um, yeah, and I mean, look, she recovered and it was fine and blah, 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 <laughs> but like such a rigmarole. So, you know, you spend so much money designing your logo and your website and your Absolutely. brand. And, as well as the emotional and, attachment you have to it. That's exactly what I was just thinking. I'm like, you yeah. love it. Like you came up with this name. Yeah, and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Do you have any like good and bad examples of where people have like used uh, IP protection to either save themselves or they've gotten to hot water or anything like that? Yeah, we unfortunately hear that story quite a bit. We did a, a very small survey a couple of years ago um, when we created the products that I look after, which was, 
uh, called Tea and Chaka. Um, but basically, we did some surveys of small businesses. And we actually found of the hundred that we talked to, forty-eight of them had to rebrand. So, oh my god! <laughs> really? Better than what you think? Yeah, oh. I was I was surprised. I must admit, I didn't think it. Was I can't quite believe it's that big. Yeah, wow. yeah. I mean, maybe it's just this sample for yeah. whatever reason. But even so, um, but two examples. I, I do have one of each. There was an example with um, Heston Blumen. Blumenthal. Oh yeah, the, um, like the fancy celebrity. chef guy. Yeah, yeah. So he's you know internationally well known as a chef. Then there was a small business in Sydney that was operating under the Fat Duck name, and oh. they didn't have a trademark. And basically, Heston came in to Australia and went, "I already have Fat Duck elsewhere, but I haven't registered in Australia." Applied to have it registered in Australia to have Fat Duck stop using that name. Long story short, Fat Duck, the Sydney restaurant, is now renamed and Heston is now owns that trademark because they they didn't have the trademark and, you know, that consistent use and things like Mm. that to be able to protect it. So that's where someone, you know, a bigger brand name came in and said, look, you don't have that protection. There's also a flip side story that I absolutely love and that's um, Katy Perry, pop star Katy Perry. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fashion designer that is in Australia, that is um, also goes under the name Katy Perry. That's her name. And she was selling clothing under the the trademark of Katy Perry and she did have a trademark. And then when Katy Perry was selling sort of fashion items, basically sent that cease and desist to the fashion designer and the fashion designer was able to take her registered trademark to court and won. Oh, my God, I love love that. that. (laughs) Yes. So I do know it's back in court again because I think Katy Mm. Perry, the pop star, is perhaps going and trying again. Um, So that that story's not over yet, but she did win the first first time it went through to court. Wow. That's so – it's really interesting, isn't it, you know, just having that – you know, box ticked, registered, done, and then just, you know, at any point in the future can kind of lean back on that if anybody does try and pull anything. So, yeah. 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 And, and like consistent use comes into it in terms of, you know, you're showing that I am using, you know, this registered trademark. I'm using it in the course of my business. My customers mm. recognize my business through this trademark. It just gives you a really um, solid story to be able to say, this is my trademark. I own it. This is mm. my asset. Mm. Um, which then gives more defensibility. I love that. Yeah, it's so good. So then how would you actually check a trademark's availability using, mm-hmm. like, yeah, how how would one go about it? If anyone's listening in right now and they're like, oh, my God, I could get in hot water, what, what should they do? <laughs> I love that question because that's always, you know, whenever I talk to small business owners, um, that's always my number one tip is the first thing to do is just go and check that Mm -hmm. you're not already accidentally using somebody else's because a lot of the misuse um, that happens is accidental. People aren't Mm -hmm. purposely trying to do it. Um, So to check it, we created, that's why we created TM Chucker. Um, So you can get to it at tmchucker.ipaustralia.gov.au. Basically, it's built for small and medium businesses where you can enter your potential trademark or, you know, your brand name or your logo enter what you sell, so your goods and services, so the things that you provide to your customers, and then it will help use, it basically uses AI to see, is there anything else out there already on the Australian register? And is there some potential issues from like a distinctiveness perspective? So what I mean by that is, um, it's not just is someone else using it, but there's also a few other conditions that when you register for a trademark, a trained trademark examiner from IP Australia will have a look at it and go, is this fair to use? Um, So things might be like um, Apple's a good example. Apple could trade with the word Apple and then sell electronics. But imagine if they were an Apple shop. (laughs) They would exclude everyone else from the Apple shop from wanting to use a word that they need to use in their normal business. So it's things like that, that distinctiveness. And then also is someone else using it? Is it potentially, you know, uh, a rude remark or you know something that's potentially offensive so there's some other considerations that examiners look at but from a uh, from a similarity perspective team checker will help you to search the engine so that, that way you can make a decision you know straight away going in you can go oh oops mm-hmm. there is already a Cadbury chocolate probably can't use that 
Yeah. I love that. And I love that it's online as well. Like that's so easy. Just jump in and it's great in that, like when you're in that ideation phase as well, and you've probably got a post-it note with like 10 different words, 10 different names, like how you <laughs> go in and check first. Yeah. I talked to some branding companies and sort of that work with small business owners and provide these recommendations going, oh, when you're providing these recommended names, can you just check that they're available as a trademark first? Um, Oh, yeah, before you get sold the dream and you're like, oh, I love it so much. (laughs) Yeah, and you can use TM Checker to then apply for that trademark if you'd like to, Um, or you can go through an IP attorney or um, you can go straight through IP Australia as well. Yeah, because that was going to be my next question. So we've gone to TM Checker. We're like, mm-hmm. okay, my trademark looks good. It looks available. What would be, you know, the next step? How do I actually apply for a trademark with IP Australia? Yep. So you can use TM Checker and that takes you through what we call the head start process, which is basically it goes to an examiner and they'll mm-hmm. look at it in five days to say, yeah. That's quick. Uh, actually, there's some issues X, Y, Z, or nope, you're good to go. No one else is using it. We don't see any other issues. Um, and then that goes on to you pay a second fee, and then that goes as a full application and is uh, registered in about from seven and a half months. So yep. because of international treaties, it has to take seven and a half months. Oh, um, really? The minimum, but you can get at least get your answer back within the five days so you know, okay, I'm good to go, and then you're sort of backdated to that yeah. date um, oh, of that cool. protection. And that is uh, $330 per class. Awesome. So to give you an idea, there's 45 classes you can choose from. Mm-hmm. Big companies, Apple, Samsung, they might go <laughs> more towards the 45. The average sort of company that I've seen personally has been, you know, two to three classes, <laughs> one mm-hmm. to two to three classes. So we're not talking all 45. So that's $330 per class. Um, otherwise you can apply through just our standard but that takes 13 weeks which is why it's a bit cheaper so that's $250 a class and you can apply just standard through IP Australia and all you need is your trademark your goods and services and basically the owner to be able to apply that's all you need to apply and if you do have because some people do have quite complicated um Mm sort of businesses and they're not quite sure what to choose because they offer so many different services you can also go talk to an IP attorney but that's separate to IP Australia yeah and that's just what I was thinking in my head I you know it kind of as we're talking through it now it's sounding simpler and simpler as we as we talk through the steps and I was like okay I wonder why then you would go to uh, a lawyer an IP lawyer or a trademark attorney to do it but I guess you're right some people do have quite complex businesses and they yeah. can and and sometimes like you know if you do get so it enters something called an opposition period which basically means which is something if you do have a registered trademark you should probably keep a look an eye out for but there's yeah. a period in there uh, in that seven and a half months where someone could say hey I already use that trademark and they can oppose it Ah, um, which okay. you then you know reply to and everything like that but sometimes that can get a little bit complicated so mm-hmm. we were at IP Australia we're trying to make it as simple as possible for small business owners to get to register that trademark yeah. but in cases where there is some more complexity that's where yeah an IP attorney can be handy mm, I love that so then if you I love you mentioned the Katy Perry story so obviously there's sometimes hopefully not often that you do have to defend your trademark Mm -hmm. so how does that work like if you saw somebody who was using your name or brand Mm -hmm. or something like that how would you actually enforce the fact that you have a trademark that's a good question with uh, yeah having a trademark isn't sort of the last and only step Mm. it's a first step you have your registered trademark and you need to use it consistently so that you can show, you know, you haven't just bought it and set and forget. You yeah. need to have that consistent use. And then, yes, monitoring for unauthorized use or infringement, which thanks to the internet can be done quite a bit more easily these days. Um, you know, you can regularly search TM Checker or our um, IP Australia or websites like IP Australia for similar trademarks. You can monitor your competitors' activities. You can look for, you know, Instagram hashtags you can search Mm. for social media you can search URLs like it's it's quite you know you can see if your brand name is being used by someone other than you and if that does happen 
um, without your permission, there's a few different things you can do. Um, the first is sending a cease and desist letter mm -hmm. to that person to basically say, I'm the registered trademark owner, you can't use this. Uh, and a lot of the times that can be successful because people aren't aware that someone already was owning it and yeah. already owned it and that there's an issue. If that unauthorized use continues, you can take legal action against the infringer, in which case you do need to or probably would <laughs> contact an IP attorney. Um, and then there's other, a couple of other few like alternative dispute opportunities so things like mediation and stuff like that which ip australia offers mm. um which if you do end up in that sort of predicament you can there's information on our website about it okay awesome yeah i love that you said um registering the trademark is the first step so it's kind of like if something bad happens you've got that to fall back on but if you don't take the first step then yeah you're going to be in some you might get yourself into hot water you could. There is ways to protect it through sort of common law provisions to say, oh, but I've been using this in my business. And, you know, it's possible, mm. but it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Make it easy for yourself, people. I love that. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so can you trademark anything or is there like a, I know we've talked about like a name and a logo. Mm -hmm. Is that like it or can you trademark more than that? Like what's the scope? There's a surprising amount of things that you can trademark. The name, logo, or phrase are the, the most common ones. You know, the Nike, just do it, those sort of things. Uh, yep. um, you can trademark letters, numbers. They are harder to get, though. Um, sounds, so jingles can be trademarked. Oh. Sense. Sense. The smell. What? Yeah, there's very few of them. <laughs> um, so one of them is actually the smell of, I think it's a eucalyptus oil on a golf tee. <laughs> is, is actually what? Trademarked. Yeah, yeah, that smell is trademarked. Um, That's you can hilarious. Trademark pictures, movements, so like the Salt Bay. <laughs> oh my God! Of course, um, yep. effective packaging. So you know the Coca Cola bottle, for instance, that shape, mm -hmm. um, or any combination of those, and colors as well. So Tiffany blue, Cadbury purple. So mm -hmm. they're more rare and they're more difficult to get, but they are possible. Wow, that's cool. So any tips? So we are uh, the Spark Peeps, uh, small business owners, mm -hmm. women in business. Any tips for them when they go through this process? So whether they're thinking about, um, you know, they're reflecting on their IP and um, thinking they need to go through this process, any kind of tips to get them started? So first thing I would do is basically a, a bit of an audit of what you've got. Mm. What, what assets do you have that you rely on for your business that could actually fall under the banner of an intellectual property? Mm. You know, do you have an invention? Do you have a brand? Do you have a design? What is it that you rely on or that you need to have there for your businesses to succeed? Then with that, make sure that it's, if, particularly if it's a trademark, make sure it's distinctive. So that sort of, you know, something that's unique and memorable uh, that will really help you with that branding to easily, you know, like Spark. Yeah. They'll help you to easily identify and go, oh, okay, yeah, no, I remember talking to someone from Spark. Then you need to conduct a thorough search. So that's coming into places like TM Checker or the IP offices, you know, their websites and seeing their mm -hmm. search systems to see, has anyone else had this idea before, this brand before, this patent invention before? Mm -hmm. um, which if you're only selling in Australia, you can do using Australian sites. Otherwise, you might want to go a bit broader internationally. They're always called intellectual property offices, so they're quite easy to find <laughs> through Google. Um, and then just using once you've you know got that right and you know, okay, I'm good, then it's just consistently using it and, and keeping just keeping an eye on it just like you would any other asset in your business. I love that. You've kind of, you know, I started this conversation thinking, oh my God, we're talking about plant breeder rights and this is going to be <laughs> But I love that you've distilled it down and gone, okay, no, this is super important because we're talking about, you know, protection for your business, building assets, there's value there, but actually it's not hard to get started. You know, you can jump online, TM Checker and, and like literally in seconds kind of get some answers. It's very yeah. cool. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of information out there. So, and, and there's a couple of services, you know, there's something for small businesses if called the, um, patents SME service if you're a small business and you haven't used an IP attorney before and you want to get a patent 
Um, there's actually a free service where we can offer you some more information that you might get otherwise. You know, there's team checker for trademarks. So there's, there's quite a bit there to support small businesses. That's so good. We'll make sure that we link up all of that in the show notes as well so yeah. that people can get easy access. Lauren, you are the best. Thank you so much for jumping on this episode of Spark TV and sharing the IP Australia wisdom. I know even personally, I just got a lot of clarity. So I know everyone dialing in uh, will get that as well. So thank you so much for your time. Great to hear. Thank you so much for having me. Really appreciate it. <laughs>